Yo folks and welcome, in today's video we'll be talking about some promising waifus in the closed betas for Heat Gone Erythal. This will be a real time 3D RPG and we're gonna go straight into the gameplay before we talk about the waifus. We'll get to them in a bit, right now we're in chapter 3, we're gonna go to 3-13 right here. You can see recommended level 28 and right now a little bit of a loading screen but not too intrusive. Right here you can see an auto chest like board and all this is it's a grid system that shows you how your units are going to be attacking which path and the most important part is you have a guardian or this shielded character waifu and then you have like a warrior at least one person in the front to take all of the attention in the front and then you can have your assassins or casters and your healers in the back. You can do whatever you want at the end of the day, but this is the way I like to do the gameplay just because it makes the most sense so we can protect and deal the most damage as efficiently as possible. So as you can see, there's skills or energy that is triggering right here. This is our assassin waifu. You can make it so that she runs all the way in the back or she gets stopped by this dude. But as you can see, you can definitely place a certain attacks in particular areas. It's fairly different from you know, an auto cast RPG where you have almost zero control. This game gives you just enough control so you understand what's going on and you feel like you're actually doing something. Of course, you can totally be hands free and just leave it on auto. But of course, a person playing the game will be much better on auto. They instantly use a skill and you don't really know what's going on. But at the same time, it's really nice in case you're like, oh, I am doing some homework and this is a phone game and I need to do stuff. As you can see on the left hand side, the more skills that you cast, the more you build like your ultimate gauge or your skill meters. That is really important in case you want to time like a huge burst wave of attacks. I think that is really cool. So there's definitely advantages with auto and you know, just playing on your manual. So right there, we got a level up on our account level that is just based off of us expending our stamina, right? I'm not going to fight this boss yet because I have to be level 30, but I just want to give a quick glimpse on the gameplay right here. Let's talk about those waifus and the upgrading systems that we encounter within this game. So Surslet, she is from a three star guaranteed summon. I'll show how I got her a little bit later. And you can see their traits. You can see Hoplite right here has like that warrior icon to it. This is gonna be our guardian, our shielded waifu, Gildan, or I like to say FGO Mash. And you can see she's a darkness element. You can also see they have weapons. These weapons are pre-equipped and you can modify them. The most important part is when you modify them, they'll add, you know, physical attack or HP or whatever, right? But you can also refine them. And this is the limit break system where currently she can only go up to level 30 at max. But once we get their three parts refined, then we can proceed with getting her to level 40, 50, whatever, right? So I just wanted to describe that system really quickly in case you want to see it in real time. I didn't really want to do this, but at the same time, it's kind of worth it. So go right here, you upgrade, and then you make it so that they're level 10, right? And you're like, upgrade, that's really good. By the way, don't waste these resources. We'll do like a mistakes to avoid at a later time. And then you're gonna go ahead and refine the weapon once right there. These materials are very precious. I'm gonna say don't do this, but this is just for example's sake. You're gonna go ahead and click refine right here. And now instead of level 10, we can go into level 30 like I talked about earlier, right? There's also like this awakening system where you can use shards from collected characters and this is how you get them to three stars, so on and so forth. I believe I can do that with one of my characters, Ume right here. I'm pretty sure it's Ume, right? So we got 35 and yep, we have just enough and we hit awaken and there you go. You can three star almost any unit because you can farm for their shards. And you can also upgrade their skills, which is going to be using these materials, right? So as you can see, you can also check where to get them based off of just following the stages. These are arc tasks. This is where you go within, I guess, your daily missions. You could say this is like your gold currency credits, right? This is going to be your EXP, you know, how you level up your characters. That's how I got the characters to level 10 earlier. And then this is going to be Purge Anomaly, which is going to be a particular skill currency that you will use. So your standard gotcha mechanics where there's going to be all sorts of currencies. This is going to be your maze or tower modes that you can complete, which is actually daily. Some of these you can only access once. And then you can see this one's going to be like your unlimited tower. You'll see right here, daily reward, starlight revelation, challenges per day, right? Very nice right there. And we have hero's journey, which is going to be where you tackle 
to get upgrades for your characters. This Hoplite Advanced Gem, this is used in order to refine gear. Just note, this is very important. And this is probably the heaviest stamina cost, ranging at 25 per run, which is really crazy. At least be wary that upgrading characters does not come cheap. Dreams Back this is gonna be an area where you can get some shards absolutely for free just by tackling it. If you're wondering, this is going to be the premium currency that allows you to purchase other things within the premium shop. And this is your stamina, like we talked about earlier. And if you're wondering how did I access like the daily section, it's gonna be Outland right here. You can see Arc Pass, Dream Back, Deep Maze, and Hero's Journey. We didn't really cover that in great detail. But let's go ahead and see this drop down. This is gonna be how you see dailies, weeklies, and main quests. There's a very nice quality of life where it's like a single tap to get everything. Dailies are super easy. You know, you just go through like those dungeons. This will be your achievement section. I love this one touch. You don't have to individually go to each one. You could just be like one touch and you get it all. Maybe one touch to claim everything would be nice too. Very reminiscent of like the Honkai Star Rail and Honkai Impact 3rd series. That's what I want to say. Regardless, this game is highly polished. There's going to be this vessel area where you can do, I guess, like your city building stuff the way you would describe it. This is going to be very important. We'll talk about it a little bit later to be the area where you can get crystals and collecting crystals is important in order to build your city or your area out a little bit further. This is going to be where you do like your idle or dispatch missions, right? So make sure to do these and unlock this as well, timely as you can. It's really not that important in my opinion because it's only a limited amount of currency. And then you also have, I believe, not this one, this is called Sailing Theater. Rehearsal room, this is the training room and I need enough currency in order to easily unlock character talent function. By the way, this menu, everything about this game, super snappy. That's why I think this is just a modern take on what RPG should be. And it's honestly one of my favorite RPGs that I've played so far in 2022. I'm just going to go ahead and outright say that. Mesmerizing Labyrinth. This is going to be your true labyrinth mode. As you can see, you can collect like these artifacts or cards, whatever you want to call it. They come in three bundled sets. I didn't cover it, but it goes on your characters and they have set effects where it's like increase attack speed, you know, increase position effect and all sorts of things. So very standard, like, armor sets in this game that's what you would consider it right and you can of course summon it within the wish system which will be right here before we do some summons i want us to also go right here this is going to be our login bonuses that you can acquire don't forget to claim your monthly sign in and then right here this is going to be where you get like seven day logins and all sorts of stuff this is how i got gildan absolutely for free which was absolutely phenomenal i recommend her she's like the best like guardian in the game outside of the one star one and then there's going to be the knight's trial where you can get ume for free and then you can also get roko for free in the fantasy land journey i believe there's going to be all sorts of ways to get free characters within this game i absolutely love it but yeah the promising waifus i have to say my favorite is going to be Ilya right here and she's actually the rate up character i just want to showcase her really quick i absolutely love how smug isa is especially on her profile photo these characters, I love them to pieces. I wish everyone could play. It's a limited release. So if you got the news early, you could have downloaded it. I think they had a spot of like maybe like 10 to 6,000 people, but these are going to be the banners right here. You can see this is a rate up banner with like Wizard of Oz theme. We have Dorothy right here and the little lion, very cutesy. And then right here is this going to be the general pool with the three star artifacts, card effects, wish reward preview, whatever you guys want to call these guys. I like it quite a bit because it just looks really beautiful and simplistic. By the way, the sound on this game is very nice. If you're wondering what are the rates for this, 39% for a one star, two star, 19%. So 2% rates to be frank with it. Inspiration wish, five star. I don't know what that is. Uh, 50 consecutive draws will guarantee a three star. So 50 pity is not bad whatsoever. And then, or five star inspiration to 4% increase the rates by 2% for the next 50. So you have an option to get a guaranteed three star or a five star inspiration. We're gonna go ahead and go for the three star guaranteed. Let's go ahead and kick off this summon session. Ulya, please come home. She's going to be an assassin waifu and this is gonna be a look at the summon system. So you can draw whatever you wanna draw. Maybe you have some secret symbol that will guarantee you a 
three star or five star, whatever. Three star being pretty decent and the highest in my opinion for you to summon. I think five star is just extra icing on the cake. And right there, we get a two star. That's going to be the highest. We got Issa right here, a very smug looking screamer. We got another screamer. And a lot of these are just going to be dupes for us, but we could definitely use the essence. Asa, our husband right there. Chlor, she's my favorite mommy waifu in the game currently. And the voice lines, they're really good. Like I have to say, they did not skip out on that part, but I think our protagonist is currently silent for the time being. Regardless of the fact, I like how this game actually feels modern. So right there, we're building up some sort of pity, I'm sure. And let's go ahead and do a 4800 summon. In case you don't want to draw a pretty circle or anything, you can just hit skip right there. And there we go. We got some uh, characters. Yeah, I want my 5 star or 3 star. But let's go ahead and keep it going. I really don't want to hit like that 5 multi pity. And you can also tap once, it'll auto draw a nice little image for you. Maybe that's the play, it's golden. Cause what you wanna see is this thing to remain golden. As gold as it could possibly be, that is the way. Do it one more time. There we go, baby. That's what we wanted to see. All right, our first one's going to be the gold right here, or maybe it's gonna be saving itself for the last one. We got Miria and we got the Raid Up Waifu. Very nice right here. We're gonna do two more multis on this just to see if that reset our pity or what have you. I don't really see the pity meter whatsoever, but I wouldn't be too glaring at like those small bugs and visual things because remember this is a closed beta. Right, like for example, there's no PVP currently implemented within this game. I feel like PVP would be highly beneficial to something like this where there's a lot of real time strategy flowing and going and the characters, they're pretty lovable. And I think everyone would definitely like to collect something that will you know, be showcased in front of others to be excessively powerful compared. So we got our epics and we got another one. Oh man, I don't know what to say. The luck is on this account, that is for sure. And well, the dupes are nice. I think for now they're not too incessive. Oh, we got Kaim Kaim Khan. The names in this game are fairly difficult, and then some are just screamer, like so simple, right? We got Isa right there. So the next one is going to be our fifth multi. I'm pretty damn sure if I can count properly. If not, we'll just do one more. So we got Kyam Kam. I, I don't want to say that inappropriately, all right? Because YouTube monetization, I don't want to mess with it being mean to me. So we pointed at the same image or like the same symbol. It drew us like the same thing. We get another gold. We get a little bit of an epic that's guaranteed. Oh, we do. I don't know if that means it's a guaranteed because that was definitely five or four. Regardless, the rates are really good for 2%. Maybe it's just because it's streamers luck or YouTubers luck. I don't know how to describe it. Altogether, I'm pretty happy with this one. And oh, we got a copy of Ruku right here. So. Pretty amazing right there. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do it one more time because why the heck not? This is closed betas, I'm just having fun. And we'll do like mistakes to avoid and everything. I know this game isn't out for everyone to play, but I feel like it would just be nice for you guys to know what not to do because I made plenty of mistakes like using my EXP currency a little bit too early and upgrading the incorrect heroes or just going into sections that I shouldn't have or just saving my stamina because there are ways where you can expend stamina inappropriately. Like if you tackle a stage, you might lose half stamina. Or if you repeat a stage and you fail it, like you can't three star it yet, then you will lose like half your stamina. There's a lot of different things. So if you want to min max your stamina or min max like building characters and whatnot, that way you can get the most efficient playthrough. Then we'll talk about that in another video. But yeah, that is going to be that part. I'm gonna go ahead and do one summon on this. I actually like the artifact system in this game because it's relatively straightforward. And I guess you get like a small circle if you go in the inner circle and the big circle draws a big circle. Go figure. Can I get a gold right here? That would be pretty, okay. Not Maybe the gold circle or the big circle is not the strat because that has not landed me a single gold so far. But there is a thing as like, oh, I didn't do it enough times or whatever. We got Raul, the prologue. I love how like these artifacts, they look like actual like waifus and characters that I would want and summon for. So hopefully they appear within the game. Like even like this little lion dude, so cute. Ojilia. 
awesome right there. And what's nice is since there's so little characters, then there's gonna be so easy to get like your three stars. That's why you're like, Bork, how are you getting so many? Look at the amount of like one stars and two stars in this game. Like there's almost an equal exchange of like three stars to two stars and one stars, which is so rare. So that's probably why it's also in closed beta. I really enjoy this game. Uh, I hope it comes out in early access for everyone to try or it releases fairly soon because it's just so like pristine with polish and quality. There's a lot of visual bugs. There's like missing voice lines and all that. I won't say this game is perfect, but it's good enough to a point where it feels like a modern 2022 gotcha game. That's what I want to describe it as. And we can't get enough of these, right? I feel like we could always get more. But yeah, these are the promising waifus that I absolutely love and the CBTs for Higan Erythal. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you made it this far, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment. Follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram if you want to see my face, follow me on TikTok in case you want to do that stuff. We are doing our 35,000k giveaway right now and feel free to fill out the gleam.io more official stuff. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day and see you guys in the next one.